Um, I'm going to do a couple of uh, traditional ballads that I learned from the older folks there around home. One of them is uh, one that I learned from Inez Chandler Chandler, who learned all the uh, dirty love songs of her generation and passed them on like every good traditional artist should. I'll be sharing that one last. This one I'm going to share with you that um, only has three verses. I debated as to whether to do one of those that had 96 verses to it, but I figured y'all were a little tired for that, so I'm going to spare you. This is one called His Bright Smile Haunts Me Still. It's been a year since last we met. We may never meet again. I have struggled to forget, but the struggle is in vain. For his voice rides on the breeze, his spirit comes at will. In the midnight on the seas, his bright smile haunts me still. In the midnight on the seas, his bright smile haunts me still. I have sailed neath foreign skies. I have trod the desert path. I have seen the storms arise. Like a giant in his wrath Every act that I have known That a reckless life could give Though his spirit has now flown His bright smile haunts me still Though his spirit has now flown his bright smile haunts me still in the first clear light of dawn. As I gaze upon the deep, his form still fills my sight. As the stars their vigil keep, and as I close my aching eyes, sweet dreams my memory fills. And from sleep when I rise, his bright smile haunts me still. And from sleep when I arise, his bright smile haunts me still. And this is Inez Chandler Chandler's little song who was as uh, referred to herself as being big and stout. She had a pocketbook that looked like one of those big meat cleavers. It was a big trapezoid shaped thing that had those little straps on the side. All the women over home had those pocketbooks. How many of you remember them pocketbooks? They had that big plastic ridge across the top of them and that big gold ball, you know, on the, right in the center of it that they could flip up. And there's all kind of stuff lived down in them pocketbooks. They took it all to church with them. All sorts of things. They, dive down into them pocketbooks right before they went in the church house to get that little old handkerchief out of there and they'd wet it with their thumb and then they would come at you with that snuff covered handkerchief and aimed right for the side of your mouth because you had gotten something on your mouth right before you went in the church house but y'all will remember one of these things they kept in them pocketbooks great big old wedge shaped things when you got a little bit restless and you started to fidget on that bench there in the church house, 
that pocketbook which was in the position that was the first position they kept it in when they was in a church house you never could tell they might be some varmint underneath them church benches crawling around stealing old women's pocketbooks so they kept them in the position white knuckling right there on the, that bench the other way they kept them was in lockdown position they had worked them pocketbooks up on their arm just as hard as they could and Inez would have to stop at her elbow and rest a few minutes and breathe hard. <sighs> and then she'd back up and she'd work that pocketbook on up on her arm. And she'd slam that elbow down on it, grab her left wrist and her right hand and lock that sucker down. Granny said they'd done that so that if somebody stole their pocketbook, they could follow them by the blood splatters on the ground. They could catch them pocketbook thieves. So there we'd be sitting in the church house and they'd all be lined up across that bench holding them pocketbooks, white knuckling them on their knees like right there. And you'd start to fidget. Then that big ball that was colored in gold paint would come up and that pocketbook would yawn open almost to the other side of the church house and they would dive down in there and disappear and they'd just be their feet sticking up out of them big pocketbooks. You'd see all sorts of things flying up out of there. They'd be little handkerchiefs with 50 cents tied up in them as gonna give to the offering. They'd be little notes to themselves. They'd be whole notebooks down in there with five sets of cutlery that they could take out after the church house was open and they'd whip out three plates, three cups, saucers, and you'd have a picnic right there on the church ground. They had all sorts of things down in them pocketbooks, but the one thing you're going to remember is when you started to fidget, they'd dive down in them pocketbooks and they would come out with a half piece of juicy fruit chewing gum. And it was always juicy fruit chewing gum for a reason. It was most easily decorated the night before with old women's stuff. They'd dig down in their pockets on their aprons and they'd drag out all that lint and stuff, you know, and they'd stick it on the top of that chewing gum. Then they'd go into their snuff can and they'd get a little bit of snuff and dab it on the top of it, you know, so that then they'd go into their hairbrush and they'd get a great big long hair, you know. They'd stick it on there and kind of grind it down in there because they wanted you to buy and they'd be still. And when you put that half piece of juicy fruit chewing gum in your mouth, you was still because you was sitting there going like this. But you sat still, didn't you? I'm going to finish up with one of Inez Chandler Chandlers. It'll go right over the head of all these young'uns here, but maybe you'll catch it. I don't say a single bad word in it, and so you're lucky tonight. So this is Inez Chandler Chandler's song. There was an old farmer who lived by the sea, and a merry old farmer was he, was he. Do you notice how quiet the young'uns got when I said that? He had a fair maiden who laid on the grass, and every time she turned over, you'd see her fair ruffles and tuffles as slick as a duck. She taught that old farmer a new way to bring up the children and teach them to knit while the servants in the barnyard was shoveling out contents of the barnyard as slick as glass. If you don't like my story, you can go kiss my daughter in the parlor who winds up the clock with a piece of red ribbon tied all round her Poodle dog, her poodle dog, her poodle dog galore. If you don't like my story, I'll tell it no more. Thank you very much.